my video is starting. Good evening, good evening. Want to just recognize persons who are coming on already. I see Sister Nadine Campbell, Sister Dolores Bright, who is uh, usually on, and also uh, my biggest fan, Sister Wendy Robinson. Also see Michael Grant, greetings to you and uh, let me trust that everybody is is doing well I see Maureen Smith good evening to you as well let me hope and trust that you have had a good day thus far that you are in a good space that you are sheltered that the the storms of life didn't batter you too much and even if you felt a battering, you know that you are, you have the deliverer, the peace speaker on your side. God is good, good to every one of us, including Brother Gregory Graham. Good evening to you, sir. Thank you so very much for joining. And as the numbers continue to go up, we will, as the numbers continue to go up, we will or I will continue to recognize persons you know as you as you come on but uh, this is the space this is the place on a Wednesday evening at least at least for now and at least while we are still in the, the kind of restricted or restrictive positions that we are in where measures are concerned and safety overall you know we will continue to broadcast from this space again this is my living room my personal space uh, to yours and it is so good to have you sharing another Wednesday evening in our Bible studies praise the Lord let us just pause for a while Tracia Black good night to you let's just pause Bobby Hugo Brown, Sister Yvette, good to have you. Good evening to you as well. Let's pause and uh, let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercies, your love, your kindness, for the peace, Lord, that you have placed in our hearts. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping us throughout the course of this day and this week thus far. Lord, things may not have gone the way we wanted them to in all situations, but God Almighty, we are still here. And that is very, very important. It means that we can look forward to working on other things. We can look forward to making adjustments. We can look forward to you leading us more than all to make the right decisions for things to get better. So, Lord, we thank you for life. Every disappointment, Lord, is for good. Every door closed, it is because you willed it to be so. You close doors with your perfect will, and you open doors with the same will. So, all in all, God, we thank you. Even though disappointed, even though hurt, 
even though harassed, even though confused, frustrated, stressed. Lord, so many feelings right now and so many adjectives, Lord, to speak to how we feel and what we're going through. But Lord, we thank you for being the sovereign one. You are more than enough. You are Jireh. You are El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. And God Almighty, as you reveal yourself to Moses, you continue to reveal yourself to us today. You are I am that I am. You are everything that we need you to be. And so, Lord, we are positive. We, we lift our faith knowing that you will be all that we need you to be and will supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. Bless us as we embark on another session. May your spirit guide us into learning all truth that comes from your word. Lord God, as we take our time and we go through your word and we go through the issues, Lord, that really matter, we pray, God, for leadership. We pray for presence, the Holy Spirit's presence. Lord, right here in this living room, Lord God, on this virtual platform, to spread, Lord God, throughout wherever the geographic location, may your blessings fall upon your people, upon those who are viewing tonight and any other time thereafter. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Noreen Witter is on. Good evening to you. Thank you so very much for joining. We give God thanks and praise for allowing us one more chance, one more opportunity. I want to take the time to just greet everyone and just to say welcome to you. Welcome to Bible studies. Welcome to this virtual space, the Sandy Bay New Testament Church of God Facebook page. Greetings to you, Sister Evans. Thank you so very much for joining. Uh, greetings and welcome to all the members of the Sandy Bay Church who continue to give support and continue to join in. Christine Smith Campbell, please feel welcome along with everyone else. I want to greet uh, all those who are joining from the, the diaspora perhaps. We know that we have we have persons viewing whether live or, or later on they can watch it at, at their leisure but we know that people go on and view and like and some share and what is important is that we continue to spread the word continue to teach the word and continue to learn from the word every opportunity to share the word of God or from the word of God I treat it with priority and it, it takes it takes a prominent place and space in my life and I look forward to sharing with the people of God on, on every occasion and every opportunity that I every opportunity that I get I give God thanks for those opportunities and try to make use of it my hope is that you would have been learning something we have been looking at the doctrine of prayer and I trust that you would have been learning and you would have been applying to your own personal prayer lives you know uh, last Saturday morning we met and we prayed and I really felt the, the presence and power of God in the midst of the people we prayed for the needs and I feel that God has begun to respond to those needs that were written some on paper uh, there were requests that came to the altar on phones and, and and people just lifted their faith to God and I trust that you would have been seeing the blessings of God reaping the blessings of God even if it's not coming the way that you anticipate but just to acknowledge that God is still moving but the point is that we must be applying that which we are learning where we we have instructions to follow we seek to follow them where we have examples to mark and learn from them that we should learn from them where we have principles to be applied then we must seek to apply it makes no sense to just be getting theory and not putting it into practice so my prayer is always that God will not just give us 
a, re a receptive heart or receptive hearts, but that he will also give us responsive hearts so that we will respond. And every time we, we hear the word of God, it, it demands a response. I pray that your response, I pray that our response will always be a positive and favorable one to the word of God. Let's, let's apply our hearts to wisdom and let us put God's word into practice. I want to celebrate with those who celebrate uh, birthdays and anniversaries. The month of January, you know, is, is another month that we have some celebrants, uh, birthdays in particular. I uh, would have missed some last week. I wasn't at church on Sunday. Was in the was was in the hills of Saint Anne, a place called Abuka, and and went from Abuka to to Campbell's Land. I don't know if anybody on the platform will know those places. Right? It was freezing, but the gospel had to be shared, and I was called upon to do so along with the young adults ministries. So that's where we were. But I I heard that. Uh, um, K, that would be Campbell K. Campbell, you know, that she celebrated her birthday and is growing into a mature individual. I pray that the Lord will, will keep her and that she, I hope that, that, that Deva gave her a good time. And she did say that she was going to give her a good time on Saturday. I trust that she enjoyed it and that everything went well. Happy birthday to you, ma'am. And the, the Lord's blessings upon you. Uh, all those who are celebrating this week and going into next week, if this is your month, then 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 we celebrate with you. If you're celebrating an anniversary, uh, the same principle: the blessings of God, or prayers and best wish wishes for your anniversary, whatever it is that you're celebrating. Uh, um, something happened positive at work something in your community uh, something in your home whether it's a promotion a deliverance a miracle whatever it is i celebrate with you and i invite the entire platform to celebrate with all those who have anything noteworthy to celebrate once you see it as important and you deem it uh, uh, relevant enough to even share with somebody else then it is something worth celebrating so the, the blessings of the lord be upon all all the, the 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 persons who are celebrating everyone celebrating uh throughout the month of january we continue to bear one another in prayer we want to remember the shut-ins we want to remember uh, those who are less fortunate than ourselves and we want to try and apply ourselves accordingly uh, to be as benevolent as we can, you know, to, to, to be the hands of God extended as much as we are able to let us open ourselves, make ourselves available so that the Lord can use us even in simple ways. Your left hand doesn't have to know what your right hand is doing. I just want to encourage the people of God. I want to encourage you all the time to be on the lookout for opportunities to help. Pray for opportunities to help. No matter how, how poor you think you are, ask God to show you how you can help somebody else. As poor as you think you are, somebody out there is poorer than you are. So every one of us, we have an opportunity to help somebody else. Uh, the month of February is a month that we want to, nationally, uh, we are observing uh, evangelism and discipleship and I want to encourage us to to be sharing the word of God uh, with our family members and and with our community members with our neighbors with our co-workers uh, the last Sunday in 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 uh, February the last Sunday in February which is going to be the 28th sorry the 27th Sunday the 27th is is earmarked as baptism sunday and 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 I'm, I'm 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 announcing it i'm not even waiting until until sunday to announce it i'm i'm putting it out there on the platform from this evening that the 27th last sunday of february 
is baptism sunday and this is not just a sunday bay thing now this is according to the national calendar and we want to we want to put our hands and hearts and prayers where it's supposed to be and and seek to encourage others to give their lives to the lord and to lead them into water baptism so let us be in prayer let us pray for our family members let us pray for for uh, our community members and co-workers and friends who are not saved our children and grandchildren and let while we pray let us put in a word of encouragement let them know that this sunday is coming up and that we are open to candidates of all shapes and sizes you know of both genders and and, and sexes you know we are open to rich and to poor to, to, to the career oriented professional and to the man that considers himself to be just a laborer it doesn't matter the ground is level at the foot of the cross and once you are willing to confess Christ as Lord and Savior then it is my duty that is my that is my cue and I'm commissioned on that premise to baptize in the name of Jesus Christ so let's be in prayer about this and let's encourage someone to 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 that, to that end to surrender and follow the lord into water baptism we have been looking at the doctrine of prayer and we 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 have been focusing our attention on some hindrances to prayer and this evening we want to turn our, our attention to part 4 and to you know we we have considered prayerlessness already and it is something that we must be aware of. It can happen to any one of us. It can happen to any one of us. And when we talk about prayerlessness now, uh, 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 for those people who are praying and they're not genuine, might as well you're not praying any at all. Right? So pr prayerlessness is, is serious. And it's something that can creep upon you. And not before too long, you are so busy, even doing, even doing the church's work, that you don't even recognize that your own spiritual life is depleting and uh, or, or trending downward so we have to be mindful of prayerlessness and for this season this is the time for us to be prayerful now is definitely not the time to become prayerless now is the time when the people of god must 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 turn the notch up a little bit and 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 put it in a higher gear and that is your spiritual life and, and begin to pray more to the Almighty God. And, and the Lord listens to all types of prayers. He's open to it. And we, we, we have a dynamic relationship that we've been exposed to, whereby we can approach God and, and, and just, just tell him anything and, 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 and give him what he's due. And he's always ready and willing to hear us and to respond to us. Uh, we also looked at wrong motives. As, a, as another hindrance to prayer and where our motives are not right or righteous then our prayers are hindered and again I cannot overemphasize you know a little sub point on the, on the wrong motives you know that I want us to always be mindful of it is it is being selfish you know when we when our focus is too much on on me when our focus is on me myself and I or or, or, or just to focus on, on those within our tight little circle, whether it is our family or our or family, immediate family, because sometimes, you know, not, not, even, not even all family members, you know, sometimes it's just a, a, little, a little circle within the circle of the family that we, want to, we tend to focus on. But the Lord really wants us to, to focus on, on each other. And I guarantee you, that once you are praying for somebody else then somebody else is always going to be praying for you so we need to get back to the days of i pray for you and you pray for me and that's the way it's supposed to be not not pray for me while i pray for myself but i pray for you and you pray for me so we have to be mindful of wrong motives when we are praying last week we looked at a lack of faith a lack of faith and and if if you do not have faith in God then it, 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 it really it really uh, uh, stymies and stifles the effectiveness of, of your praying 
God, God is His Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Uh, you cannot, you cannot go to a God who is spirit, and and hoping to approach Him in in pretty much just a physical way, uh, looking with your with your physical eyes. Uh, Hebrews chapter eleven tells us that that whoever wants to know God must come believing that God is that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and so faith walks hand in hand with prayer whenever we are not having faith in God it, 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 it's a sign that we are more predisposed to doubt we're saying to ourselves that that God might not be able to do it or that God may not want to give us something or or you know that this might be too big for God you know there's nothing too big for God there's nothing that 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 supersedes him there's nothing that can stress him out nothing that can get him to think twice God is sovereign he's bigger than all our circumstances a, a, a point from last week that I want to re-emphasize before we move on this evening is, is the fact that faith changes behavior faith changes behavior and I want you to make a note of that just in case you didn't last week faith changes behavior you cannot continue along the same path of as you have been traveling on doubting when you switch to faith once faith arises in the individual the behavior naturally changes you, you begin to sing your song you, you begin to to walk with your head up you begin to respond to people more positively people are going to stop and they're going to look twice they're going to think twice they're going to recognize that something has changed and and and, and even though it is not material but they're gonna notice a difference your attitude changes when faith is activated you cannot remain the same I, I'm telling you this you you just cannot remain the same when people are doubting sometimes you can see it you know sometimes you know the frustration shows you know it's clear that here is someone that is stressed out you know because of one reason or the other here's someone who is overwhelmed and you can see it in the body language but once faith is activated oh the expression on the face must change you your smile will burst forth you know uh, uh your 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 outlook would change and automatically your demeanor facial expression body language you know just how you present yourself even your very deportment when we how people dress tell you that they have faith <laughs> just the just the very outfit that you decide to put on is an indication of your mood and your attitude and i feel that once faith arises in you oh tomorrow morning you're gonna put on your best dress because you want to put your best foot forward you want to put on your best face and you want to put on your best game for the day and just walk out in the world because faith is alive in you it, it, it can't work any other way nobody can activate faith in their lives and still look depressed still look down and dejected no faith changes behavior and i want you to to just make a note of that and remind yourselves that faith change behavior or oh, even when you're going through the darkest point of your life huh? last we look at philippians uh, uh, 1 verse 19 where paul wrote to them from prison yes paul says i know that this shall turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the provision of the spirit of christ yeah? no worry brothers and sisters no apprehension pervades the rest that is found in this letter coming from the apostle uh, he is quite fine uh, some people might say well, no sir me in a prison and i talk about oh lord you know what i mean hey i am fine and and it shall turn out for my deliverance no sir more come out right away 
Paul was fine and and he would have told them that you know he has learned whatever state he found himself in to be content and so when when you when you have faith in God let the, let the, let, the, let the dark clouds rise yes let the, let the, let the storm clouds rise let, let let the darkness come up if it wants to you know join with the songwriter and say they don't bother me why for i am sheltered in the arms of god faith changes behavior another point that i want to just put a little emphasis on and then move on is is to remind us that the function of faith is not simply to get something done and i feel that this is this is extremely crucial for us to learn and and and, and process it and and embrace it you know let it let it mellow a bit in our minds and in our hearts the function of faith is not simply to get something done faith is the basis of our relationship with god to know God, the writer of the Hebrew says, Hebrews 11 and verse 6, you must come believing that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith is the basis. Paul says we walk by faith and not by sight. The basis of our relationship with God is faith. So it's not just to get something done. Even when nothing seems to be happening the way we want it to, our faith must remain intact. Praise the Lord. It must remain intact. Good evening, Sister Celia Maxwell Watson. Good to have you. Lilith Clark is on as well. Uh, Judith Douglas joined us and as well as Kevin Grant. It's good to, have, good to have you on. Thank you for joining us this evening. So faith very very important a lack of it becomes a hindrance a very very big major hindrance to effective prayer i want to say that you know you cannot pray any effective prayer if faith is lacking the, the prayer might as well you you would have you would have uh, um just 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 accept prayerlessness may as well you accept prayerlessness but if, if you're going to pray and lack faith it takes you nowhere at all. You remain at ground zero. All right. So this evening, another another uh, uh, hindrance that we want to we want to look at is not abiding, not abiding, and this one is a critical one as well. It it speaks of failure to maintain a vital relationship with God. Failure. To maintain a vital relationship with God. It, it poses a major hurdle. And stands as a hindrance to effective prayer and effective praying. Any relationship must be maintained. And, and the most important relationship in life is, is especially sensitive. I mean even, even outside of our relationship with God our relationship with our with our spouses our relationship with with significant others in our lives if 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 it is not maintained it is going to crumble you can't neglect your partner and then expect that the relationship is going to be blooming and and it's going to be blossoming and you know it's going to be peaches and 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 herbs and uh, no that's the name of a, a group from back in the day it, it, it's going to be it's just going to be all nice and everything is going to work out accordingly no you, you have to maintain it a relationship takes work you have to be willing to to walk in that relationship and bearing in mind that one person cannot maintain a relationship it takes two yes and and, and so you find that a maintenance of of any relationship is crucial to the the well-being of that relationship the healthiness of that relationship if it is not maintained then you're going to experience uh, um bouts of unhealthiness and 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 act and activities is just going to go downward and spiral out of control and the next thing you know you know you 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 you're, you're not together anymore our relationship with god must be maintained 
uh, Jesus told his disciples in, in John 15 and verse 7, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. Notice how Jesus started, how, what, what he used to preface the prayers, the asking, the petitions. He says, if you abide in me, for that prior to that he would have allowed his disciples to know, I am the vine, you are the branches. Yes, yes. If you abide in me, and his father is the husbandman, the one who takes care of, of everything. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. Praise the Lord. Good evening, Sister Deva Grayson. Good to have you. We see you. We know you're there. Uh, it's good to have your presence on the platform. That's John 15 and verse 7. Anyone, anyone, brothers and sisters, can, 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 can claim to love God. And, and as a matter of fact, if you ask the question in any setting, more than half, I want to go to another and say 95% of people anywhere will tell you that they love God, right? They will tell you that they believe in God. Or they, if, if not even to say God, they will tell you that they believe in a higher power, you know, that they believe in, 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 in something or some entity that is out there, the great unknown, in the great unknown, you know, uh, that, that, that which is in charge of, of the cosmic universe. You know, people, people will, will, will describe how they feel and, and what they believe, whether from a religious or philosophical perspective, but certainly from a personal perspective that, that they believe in God or the existence of a God. But, but brothers and sisters, it, it, it goes beyond expressing a belief to determine whether or not you are in a healthy relationship with such entity. The proof of genuineness that you are in a relationship with God is, is enduring in that relationship. It, it, it's about it's about it's about not just not just saying something because we give to lip service a whole lot. Now, we talk a lot. We can, we can say a lot of things. And especially if we're in the right setting. And you feel goose pimples come upon you. And man, you, you just declare some things. But then when nobody's looking, are you still enduring in that relationship? When, when things are not going your way, are you still committed to that relationship? Do you just love your wife or your husband when you are when things are going well and <laughs> everything is just fine? <laughs> I saw saw something on social media today. You know, uh, a wife uh, says to her husband, "You know, honey, I appreciate you so much. I just love you, and you know, I just want to make you happy." And the husband responds, "The money that you saw in the closet is not mine. I'm keeping it for somebody." <laughs> Suggesting that, you know, because the wife saw the money, oh my gosh, she was ready to just express her love and commitment and joy for her husband. But it's more than just what we give to lip service. It has to do with how much we are willing to walk in that relationship. When times are hard, when things are not going our way and, and, and situations are bad and it doesn't seem as if you know, the light is coming up to suggest that we're approaching the end of the tunnel. It, it, it doesn't suggest that. From all indications, we see darkness but we are still willing to continue walking. It's about enduring. It's about walking with God. If we are not walking with God consistently, then our prayer life certainly is, is in jeopardy. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, there's no way that you can enjoy a very positive and effective prayer life and you are abide and not abiding with Christ. 
There's no way that you can be walking with God and you're committed to God and your prayer life is off. So the, the two just don't connect. Once you are not abiding, then your prayer life cannot be an effective one. You're going to have a, a very, very uh, inconsistent uh, prayer life this minute you're with it the next minute you're not you go off on some long long break spells and 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 nobody hears you praying nobody sees you praying you know you just not praying there's no quiet time for you no quiet space it's just a regular hustle and bustle every day you know that something is off and outside of what people will observe you know that you're not abiding Consequently, the prayer life is not as effective as it used to be or as it needs to be. Less than anything less than genuinely enduring is <laughs> not truly genuine, is it? Huh? If, if you are not walking consistently with the Lord, if 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 you have a an a, an on and off kind of relationship, you know, then something is is wrong with that. If you're not maintaining the relationship, then there's no way that that relationship is going to stay afloat and stay healthy. So something is not right when you are not abiding with Christ. There is no consistency. It is less than genuine. And God wants us to be in genuine relationships with him. Paul wrote to the, the church at Rome in Romans chapter 2. 2 verse 6 to 7 and Paul wrote that God would render to every man according to his deeds to those who by perseverance in doing good seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life yes each of these words that I mentioned a while ago glory honor immortality eternal life all of these words each of them are are described as being cosmic in scope meaning these are not material things to gain we talk about glory and honor immortality you can't achieve immortality in this life so so you would have to take that out of this life altogether Immortality suggests that, listen, we never die. And, and whatever body, glorified bodies we have like Christ, it cannot decay. We know that this flesh is going to waste away. So when we talk about these, 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 these uh, um, uh, uh, elements that, that, that Paul says we, ask, we, 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 we desire them and, and we, we, we serve God with the hope of, of attaining them someday. These are not things that are, are trivial and, and, and easy to access and to achieve. No, to, uh, to achieve these, you need to be patient. You need to endure. This is why the, the, the race is not, the, the scripture said the race is not for the swift nor is it for the strong but it's an endurance race it's not a sprint it's 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 about endurance you know you you take your time it is for it is for those who can can run or walk or or creep or crawl or roll whatever it is whatever motion that it requires all that you must ensure is that you stay on course Sometimes you're running, sometimes you're walking, sometimes you're jogging, sometimes you're speed walking. Another time you find yourself and it's, it's, it's creepy, creeping there. But the, the point is that you have to keep moving because this race is about endurance. Think about how long it took David to win glory. Huh? Uh, David got the word of prophecy, got the anointing that he would be king of all Israel it took David maybe about 15 16 and a half years possibly 17 years now listen now reading about it in retrospect it, it seemed like a very short period of time but brothers and sisters to sit down and wait almost 20 years for something that was prophesied and you got the anointing Samuel, Samuel uh, reel out the, 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 the anointing jar and, and he 
poured, the horn came out and he poured that oil on David and said, you are going to be king. It took David almost 20 years. How, how long, how long did it take for, for, for Daniel to establish honor? To be, to be taken away uh, from your homeland as a, as a youth to be brought into captivity and it didn't matter what, 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 a, a pro, what position was placed on him or responsibility or honor from the Babylonians the fact is he was not a free man he was a slave how long though did it take for him to establish that honor brothers and sisters there is nothing temporary when we consider the work of Joseph there's nothing temporary when we consider the work of Samuel, Paul, or even Jesus. Paul would have us know in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 7 that, that love, love bears all things. Love, love, love believes all things, hopes all things, love endures all things. And this endurance is required if we say we love God and we are walking in a relationship with him we have to abide in him abiding is not accomplished in a short period of time it's not something that you you do overnight and you get it it's not something as as the author says that is accomplished in an afternoon's time you know when you finish all that you have to do and you know you just sit down and say all right i need to get to this assignment now all right first thing up all right let me see abiding in god let's work this out right now and you spend a few hours there and all right i got it that's not how it works this is not this is not to say brothers and sisters that that only the spiritually mature can pray effectively that's not what we're saying here nor is it to to advocate what 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 is coined spiritual elitism because sometimes people think that you know because you have been spending time on the grind spiritually you know and you've been doing some stuff it, it means that you are for a for more elite status than others that's that's not what we're saying here god hears all the prayers of all his children it is to say that that a continuing relationship with christ enhances one's prayer life so, so it's not about spiritual elitism no i'm not telling people now that boy you need to ensure that boy you're going on fasting and you know uh if, if you used to go on on five days then you have to go on 10 days no one if you used to do 21 then you have to double that and start to 42 as a matter of fact go more than jesus jesus went 40 days 40 nights then do that no we're not we're not we're not arguing or we're not lobbying for spiritual elitism because that's something that jesus scoffed at when he came when he was here on earth and saw it in the pharisees and and, and the teachers of the law who who were puffed up with pride thinking that because you know they would have studied and they were knowledgeable you know that they were better than everybody else jesus would scoff at them and and and, and would not give them the time of day but instead jesus taught the value of being humble the value of praying in a humble way but what it is that makes your prayer life effective or what contributes to the effectiveness of your prayer and praying is if you abide with god you have to live in him jesus says if you abide in me and my words abide in you ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you brothers and sisters we have to learn the value of 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 maintaining that relationship it's incumbent on us it's incumbent on us to spend more time in the word of god to spend more time reflecting on what god says to spend more time talking with god to spend more time because if you're talking with him then it means that you have to give some time to listen to what he has to say to spend that time open so that when god tell you to move you you, you don't tell him that boy well god i know so it's supposed to go <laughs> you know you are open enough but you can't reach that stage if you are not abiding with him 
there's a word in the New Testament that becomes a very instructive word for us today. It's, 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 it's the word walk. The word walk. Now, now the word walk is, is very, very important in the New Testament. It, it is, it is a, a picture word describing what it means to abide in Christ. It describes the continuing daily life of the Christian. You know, you're walking with Christ. John revealed that that continuing process is, is proof of our belonging to Christ. In 1 John 2 verse 5 to 6 or 5 and 6, John says, By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked now this is the telling this is the telling sign you know uh, you know jesus would have said to his disciples john would have been in his presence as well you know this is how others will know that that you belong to me uh, that you, you you follow me you you do what i say you keep my commandments you know if, if you love me Keep my commandments. Others will recognize you as Christian if you are willing to do what I say. Brothers and sisters, it, it, it defeats the purpose for us to say we are Christian believers, but then our lifestyle, how we walk, how we live, because that is the significance of walk here. It is not literal walk, as in you get up and walk on your two feet. No, it, it is about lifestyle. It, it's, about, it's about movement and, and the perception of our movement, how people see us, how people respond to us, how we respond to them, or how we react to them. Everything about us must depict that we are walking in Christ. So when Paul says, you know, let this mind be in you that, that was in Christ Jesus. It's the same concept and principle that John is speaking to here in 1 John 2 verse 5 to 6. He says that the one who abides, who says he abides in him, ought himself to walk in the same manner as he, he Christ, walked. So if, if, if Christ walked in humility, then we must walk in humility. Everything about Christ depicted humility, you know. When Christ says, you know, if a man slap you on the cheek, you should turn the next. That is what he did. And here we know, well, no, sir. I, 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 don't, I don't think that I should follow that one. That one is not literal. That one isn't meant for us to interpret literally at all. Because me not me nobody box me. Oh, Lord. But so, so it means, therefore, that we are, we are so concerned about self and defending self that, boy, we're willing to go on the attack if someone should attack us or someone should say something that, we are not pleased with we feel that we have to respond and we have to respond thoroughly and let them know that we are not wimps uh, but humility taking the higher ground when they go high we go low when they try to hit us low we go high either way we are following Christ as Christ walked when Christ talk about forgiveness that is what he did even to the point of death, Christ was willing to say, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Do not count it against them. All right? right? And we are supposed to be like that, but we say, no, sir. We're willing to forgive some things, but mm -mm, may not forgive that. What that one did to me, it's unforgivable. And, and, and God knows that we can't forgive him. <laughs> God knows that you won't. God knows that you're not willing. But God knows that you can and you should. Or else you can't go to heaven. Brothers and sisters, if we are going to, if we are going to, going to, to maintain a relationship with God in prayer that is effective, we must walk like he walked. When we talk about walking, and, and as imp 
this this word is so significant in the New Testament because as Christ walked, so too must all his followers walk. Not not some, but but all. So so if you're bearing the name Christian but you're not walking as Christian, then something is wrong with that Christianity. Something is wrong with, 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 with your fellowship with God. Don't, do not listen to people who, who says that who will say that, ah, God understand that boy. You had to respond and you had to do this and you had to steal that because you never had a choice. Or you, you, had, to, you had to get involved in this corrupt practice because you were hungry. No, brothers and sisters, we follow the precepts, the principles the examples that christ would have set because we are walking as he would have walked when the christians got the name the monica christians you know it, it was it was while they were in antioch and 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 because of how they were living and because of how they were walking you know the brethren the people of antioch they looked at them and they said my god look at these people it 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 in 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 real mockery now you know because this was done in mockery of 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 what they were doing it was actually they it, they were actually they were, they were actually ridiculing these people you know you know they were saying that boy they were walking and talking like Jesus so they must be Christians brothers and sisters that is one mockery and moniker that I am proud to take unto myself I am a Christian therefore I do not live like the world or take my cue from the world I take my cue from Christ and I want to encourage you to take your cue from him because only those who are willing to do what he says can make any claims to abiding in him. And only those who abide in him can talk about effective praying. The Apostle Paul was equally fond of the word walk. And so in 1 John 2, verse 5 to 6, sorry, in Ephesians 5, Verse 2, 8, and 15, the Apostle Paul used the word walk. He advised the Ephesians to walk in love. He advised them to walk as light. And he advised them to walk wisely. If it is Christ we are abiding in, in we cannot comfortably walk any other way whenever you get the urge to to veer off course you're supposed to feel uncomfortable uh, somehow we're getting comfortable in some lifestyles no you know it's a sign that we are no longer abiding in christ some of us we have we have become so so used to a particular lifestyle that that we we, we not even our consciences our conscience is no longer prick us you know because because it has been seared as with hot iron so so we just accept it as normal we accept it as normal we say i, I don't know nothing or i know me alone i do it because that's the new thing you know it's like because others are doing it then it's out to justify you doing it too so it's i don't know nothing. Uh, why is everybody coming down on me? Why is everybody pointing fingers at me? I, I'm, not, I'm not doing more or anything different from what the others over that side are doing. You know, people are like that. You know, we, we, we love to look for that, for that status quo to say, Hey, I am not the only one. I am simply just doing what everybody else is doing. If it is wrong or if it was wrong back then, it is still wrong now. Anything that is sinful is wrong. Anything that is wrong is sinful. So brothers and sisters, we, we have to ensure that we are walking with God. And, and the best way, we, we have the standard, you know, we have the yardstick to measure it. So we, we're not depending on each other to determine what is right from what is wrong. Because the word of God stands or bear witness to that which is of Christ and in Christ. So, so we're not talking about walking in tradition now. That, that, that's, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about walking in rituals. No, that's not what we're talking about. No, let no man judge you in light of any ritual. Let no man condemn you in light of any tradition. Let no man judge you in light of how you even appear. 
because you don't look like them and you don't th do things the way they do it you don't do things the european way that let no man judge you in light of that's not what we're talking about because sometimes we have a tendency of looking at the outward and we're saying that boy you know we tend to want to judge people in in that light and in that manner but but let nobody judge you that way you must know the connection and relationship that you have with god and you must maintain that relationship by matching it up against god's standard the standard is the word of god anybody is coming to you with anything else as the standard you need to kick it out as heretic i didn't say to kick them you know i said kick out what they're saying nobody leave here say, boy, where pastor robinson say anybody come to us with anything other than what the word of god says you must kick them no kick the heret the the, the heretic teaching and statements out anything that don't line up with the word of god it is not for us to embrace it is not for us to, to, to perpetuate. It is not for us to, to carry on as if, hey, this is the right way. Many of us would have been walking for years and would have been walking in deception. We would have been walking in, in falsehood. We would have been walking in something that is less than the truth of God. Watered down by man and, and, allow, and, and allowed, allowed us to think. They allowed us to think that boy, once you are doing things this way, then you are okay. So for some people, as long as they are not committing sexual immorality, they are fine. They are saved. You know, there are those who have begun to justify malice and hatred you know there are those who have justified uh, uh uh holding a grudge you know just 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 holding something against somebody because they said something about me and i have all right to hate them and to malice them you they go to hell if you hold on to it oh but no pastor i'm not going to hell because i am not a fornicator and i am not an adulterer and and you know i don't tell lies every day <laughs> We think that boy, because we are we are holding to certain traditions that we are all right, that makes us no better than the Pharisees. Because they held to traditions, man, and they held to to, to Moses' standard. Oh, hypocrite Jesus would call them. You know, and so based on what they could they could produce on the outward, they thought that that should be enough. Jesus came and allowed them to know it's not enough just to show and, and some people are are showing things you know they they, they even even in 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 in, in their prayer lives you know many can can pray and my gosh man we have some prayer warriors out there you know man real warriors you know man my god they can pray but brothers and sisters if if we are if we are not loving one another if, if we are not if we are not looking out for each other the welfare of others and the well-being if if we are not concerned to the point where we want to help and and, and to show positive regard for people irrespective of their status irrespective of their background you know if we are not willing to do these things in accordance with god's word then it don't matter how well and how hard you can pray and how people rate you as being being prayerful and and powerful prayer prayer, prayer warrior it, it 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 doesn't make any sense god is concerned and more interested in a good root system he's not so much impressed with what is described as the foliage you know the you, you look at a at a plant and you see it start to blossom and you know it, it it's it's green and you know it's lush and you know it just look good but if the root is bad slowly but surely every one of them leaf can drop off we look at these elements sometimes of 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 nature agriculture and and we we, we think to ourselves wow this is going to bear some good tomatoes or some good grapes this is going to bear some good sweet pepper man look how the leaf them come out nice until you see start dry up something is wrong at the root <laughs> we we can't just be, be be caught up with the foliage that which is on the 
outward. No, brothers and sisters, we must be concerned with the root. Many of our 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 brothers and sisters in the, in our churches, they have a nice foliage because they know how to put on. They know the 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 the, the, the what what people are looking for. They know about the elements that you get ratings for you know they know the the traditions and they know what can get good eye service and lip service will be given you know you're gonna get the pat on the shoulder they know what to do we know what to wear we know how to dress to the point where people get in a spirit just by seeing how you dress my god Wow, a so Christian must look, but beneath that foliage, beneath that outward, that exterior, what is under there? What is in the root? Some of us dry up at the root long time and the plant is dying. Many of us, the plant dead. It is not what is on the outward. It is about our relationship with God. To a great extent it is personal but 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 that is the point because it is personal it means that it is something that you must work out at the root to ensure that you are rooted and grounded brothers and sisters we must stop setting up and dressing up the foliage we must stop prettying up the outside yes and we must start working on maintaining a healthy extensive root system we want more rooted and grounded people many of us if the traditions fail we drop and we face if if the traditions seem threatened or we feel as if you know there's some change that's coming in that boy mm, I know so elder brown and I know so deacon barrett when when we, we teach we, we many of us we begin to lose it some begin to pull out ears and you know boy deacon brown must be turning in him grave right now make him turn if him turn him in grave that means he's in Ghana hell <laughs> his spirit never right no child of god should be turning in grave should be resting in the arms of jesus waiting waiting for that time when our faith will culminate those people who have faith in god including the forerunners those who preceded us those who who paved the way if they had solid faith and were a Abiding in God, then they are safe. If their lot on part was just to maintain the foliage, the traditions that that help to guide us, then they would have been off by a mile. Brothers and sisters, I am calling us to abide in Christ. Abide in Him. Let His word abide in you so that you would be strengthened at the root. In St. Luke chapter 8, verse 15, Jesus concluded the parable of the sower by observing that the seed in the good ground, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. This is not a sprint one more time it's about endurance it's about perseverance it's about running keep on moving irrespective of 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 obstacles irrespective of hurdles anything that is put in your way to slow you down you are going to keep moving it's about perseverance but we must ensure that the root is in the right place. Why is abiding important? It is important because it is one aspect of endurance. It is proof of faithfulness. Only in abiding is, remember this word, importunity, a real option. That's persevering to the point of annoyance 
Jesus says, uh, uh, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. He, he continued by sharing a story about a man that, that went to his friend at midnight because he had some visitors and didn't have anything to, to, to give them. And he kept on knocking. Jesus says that friend who was inside his house sleeping did not respond because of the friendship. No, he responded because he was annoyed. He said, All right, but what do you want? What you want? It's late. May I try to sleep? Everybody asleep. Tell me what you want so we can give you, make you go on, man, so we can go back to sleep. Even to the point of annoyance, Jesus says, how much more will our Heavenly Father give to those who ask of Him? Huh? Brothers and sisters, only when, when we are abiding will we ever understand and grasp the idea of importunity. To know that what we have with God is a real relationship. We can go to him today, tomorrow, the following day, three times for the day, multiple times for the day. And he is going to respond to us. So abiding is important. Because it is one aspect of endurance. It is proof of faithfulness. Only in abiding is importunity a real option. It is also a demonstration of a part of our character that is like God. That there are some things about God, some attributes that, that are not communicable. Meaning that, you know, we can't be omnipresent, we can't be omniscient, you know, not like that. But there are some, there are some communicable attributes of God that we can display as well. And, and abiding is, is one such. It is a demonstration of a part of our character that is like God, whose righteousness endures forever and whose name is from everlasting to everlasting. When we abide, it suggests that we have longevity. We keep going. We, nothing can stop us. When we can say, you know, that even when we are going through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. You, because you know you abide in Christ and Christ's word, word abide in you. You keep on going. That's, that's a part of us, a part of our character that is reflective of God's character. God endures forever and we can abide in him forever just the same. It, it's not it's it's not a non-biblical point that is being raised it is very much theological and biblical that god has given us the wherewithal to abide we have his word yes and so we know what is required of us and the more we live in his word the more we abide in him brothers and sisters abiding will entail much time Abiding will entail much prayer. It will require much attention to the biblical directives. Much cleaving to the Lord is required. Most encouraging of all, though, brothers and sisters, is the fact that abiding requires no special talent, no special training. It requires only perseverance let us continue to endure let us continue to press forward abiding in him allowing his word to abide in us so that we can ask whatever we will and jesus says john 15 and verse 7 it shall be done for you but you have to remain in him Brothers and sisters, let's be weary, let's be mindful of this hindrance to effective praying and prayer. Not abiding. For those who have been walking amiss and walking off course, drifting, this minute you're with the Lord, the next minute you're not, there's a call here to be mindful of not abiding. Maybe that which you've been praying for, the answer is delayed or withheld. 
because your walk has not been the way it should be. We must walk circumspect, not as fools, but as wise. We must walk in the word of God. Like Paul says to the Ephesians, we must walk in love, walk in light, and walk wisely. Let us continue with that walk as we abide in him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you very much for joining. I trust that these words will resonate in your hearts. That as you go about your duties tomorrow, as a matter of fact, even from tonight, whatever it is that you have to do for the rest of the night, leading into tomorrow, God's willing, ensure that you check your walk. Ensure that you check that lifestyle. How have you been reflecting the beauty of Christ? How have you been allowing your light to shine? Have, have you been walking in, in the light? Have, have you been walking wisely? Have you been walking uh, in love? Or have you been displaying hate? People look at you and they see sorrow and fear and doubt, worry, you know, dismay. I, what is it that people have been seeing? What is it that you have been you've been displaying or manifesting to others? Let's change it up a bit. Let's cause people to look at you and say, "Wait, is what happened to her today? She looked different. There's something about him. There's something about her that looks different. Even if they don't say it out aloud, they must think it because they're seeing something different. Let them see the new creation. Let them see the new you." walking in Christ, abiding in him. It will reflect later on in the effectiveness of your prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word to us tonight. Thank you, Lord, for opening our hearts and for revealing to us another hindrance to effective praying. Many have been praying and wondering what is happening why are they not getting a response? And while there could be a number of other reasons, here is one God that we need to pay attention to and to check upon our own lives and spiritual walk and wellness to see if this might be an issue for us. Lack of abiding or not abiding. Lord, we must draw closer to you. We must seek after you. Lord, if you are not dwelling in our hearts, then, Lord, we are lost already. So, God, as your people seek to draw closer to you tonight, will you draw close to them? Lord, as your people open their hearts and their minds, O oh Lord, to, to, to reflect and to, to, to reach out to you, Lord, I pray that you would encourage and embrace and invite them to come even further even closer to you lord that's what we desire just to be close to you lord teach us your word continually that as we walk as we seek to abide in you we would recognize the need for your word to abide in us your word is a lamp unto our feet a light unto our path. Your word guides us along the way. Your word teaches us right from wrong. Your word instructs us in the path of righteousness. And so God, we pray that your word would abide in us. Let it abide so that anything that is false that will try to, 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 to rear its ugly head or that others will try to sow into us. Lord, that we will be so aware and so ready, God, to defend Defend your word that God will be able to produce it, reproduce it, and to stand on them. And Lord, to throw out and kick out as heretic anything that is not in accordance with your word. Lord God, we commit tonight to abide in you and to allow your word to abide in us so that whatever we ask in your name, it shall be given to us in accordance with your will and in accordance with your purpose. Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so very much, brothers and sisters, for joining me this evening as we look or focused on, on another hindrance to effective prayer, not abiding. Let us seek to avoid it and let us seek to abide in him and allow his word to abide in us. Have a wonderful rest of the night. Uh, enjoy the rest of the week. Looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible come Sunday. Sunday is Communion Sunday. Um, unfortunately, those who are online, unless you are willing to get your implements and join us, that is allowed. I've seen it happen since the start of this pandemic. So if you want to, if you care to join us online, then that's fine. But certainly, we look forward to a face-to-face -face communion service. They say you can't call it Lord's Supper if you can have it in the day. <laughs> so let's let's appropriately coin it then. It is communion service. And we, we, we meet just to reflect on the Lord's body and his blood and, and, and the efficacy of it, how, how effective it is on us. And our faith must be lifted. For if we believe, then anything can happen. Let us abide in him and allow his word to abide in us. I look forward to it on Sunday. Look forward to sharing with you and, and, and both in the physical space and in the virtual space. We meet again next week, Wednesday, as we look at another very, very important hindrance, a very critical hindrance that we must avoid because we want our prayers to be effective and we want nothing to be blocking our prayers, nothing to be uh, distracting our prayers or detracting from the efficacy of our prayers. So, so let's look forward to next week, Wednesday, same place, same time. And I, I, I pray God's blessings upon you as my countdown specialist draws near. We are out in... God bless you, brothers and sisters. We're out. <laughs>